So what I'm going to do now is show you guys how to take blood pressure. So um, for consistency's sake, I usually would use the right arm. Um, in college, it's possible that they make you do both the right and the left uh, because you're looking for discrepancies um, between them. For instance, if you're having an aortic dissection, you might see an asymmetrical um, reading in the arms. But um, in, in normal clinical life, you'd probably end up just doing the one. But I would say choose the same side each time. Obviously, there are contraindications to taking blood pressure. So uh, if somebody has had a mastectomy, you wouldn't want to do it. If you thought there was any kind of lymphedema, you wouldn't want to do it. If they've had recent uh, radiation um, therapy, you wouldn't want to do it if it was around the area. Those are all going to be um, contraindications to this. So if you're taking blood pressure, the, um, the brachial artery is going to be here and it's just medial so if you've got the bicep tendon it's going to be just medial to that so you can actually go in and palpate the artery first and kind of have a, an idea of where it's located and then you just bear that in mind when you're using the cough so this is a sphygmometer and so this here a lot of them will have markings which will say uh, where you want to have the placement so the arrow would be put right over the um, the brachial artery um, and it would be different depending on the right or the left arm so I've got the right arm arrow here so when I'm putting it on my patient's arm this is going to be the uh, antecubital fold you usually want to put it about the size of a 50p above that's about 2.5 centimeters above and you're going to place it so that if I think that the brachial artery is running right medial to the tendon I'm going to place that that arrow right there and then I'm going to place it just snugly, not super tight, but just snugly around because I don't want this too loose. If it's too loose, it might give me an abnormally high reading. Okay. What I'm going to do to start is I'm going to uh, make sure all the air is out of my sphig. So remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay. Uh, you want to make sure it's not got any air in it, and then you're going to turn it to the right to shut it off because otherwise you're going to pump and nothing's going to happen. Okay. What I want to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to palpate the radial artery and I'm going to start to blow up until I feel his pulse disappear under my fingers. Okay, and that's roughly around uh, a 118 mmHg and then I'm going to fully deflate the cough. Okay. What that does is that gives me an idea of where I think his systolic pressure is going to be. Okay, that's the top number. Okay, if you were thinking 120 over 80, systolic is the top, diastolic is the bottom. So it gives me an idea of what I think his reading is going to be. He came in at 118, so I'm going to add 30 to that, and that's the uh, amount of air that I'm going to put into the cough when I actually go ahead and blow it up. So remember, when you're using your stethoscope, you need to have the ear prongs facing forward, not back, or you're not going to hear anything. And when you use this, any video you see done by a medic, you'll also always see them using the diaphragm. But this is not technically best practice. Actually, best practice is to use the bell, and that's what we teach you to do in the college. If you look at Bates um, as the main textbook reference, that's going to be what we teach you to do. So I'm going to make sure that this is on. Put this in my ear. I'm going to turn it over to the bell. And I'm going to slide the bell up so it's underneath the, it's right under the brachial artery. Okay, so now I'm going to do righty tidy. I shut all the air off and I'm going to bring it up to 30 above 118. So it's not quite 150. And then I start to let it go and you're looking at roughly 2 millimoles Hg. Okay, and it comes in right around 120. That's systolic. And it disappears around 78. And then I let it disappear all the way down. That's diastolic pressure. Now, you might wonder why do we have to do a manual palpation rather than just um, putting it up there and, and whacking it all the way up. And the problem is that you can have something called an oscillatory gap. If people are hypertensive, um, it's not super common. I think what I was reading is about 5% of cases maybe. But because they're stiffening in the arteries, you'll have a period uh, where you can't actually hear 
um, the kind of lub dub sound as you're bringing the blood pressure monitor down. So if you assumed, for instance, that he actually had, let's pretend that Tim's blood pressure was 160 and he had an oscillatory gap that started at 150 and that can go anywhere from 10 to 50 mmHg. If you didn't come up high enough, then you might not realize that he's actually got high blood pressure of 160 because you might start in the gap and reduce it down and think that the diastolic pressure is the systolic pressure. That's one problem. Or the problem is if he had 160 BP and there was a gap, if you didn't continue, you might miss the fact that you, again, you, you lose the sound and then it regains. So you might think that his blood pressure was 160 over 150 mmHg, which would be really, really worrying when in reality it'd be more likely to be 105 or 110 or something like that maybe. So those are the reasons why we tell you to do the manual palpation that gives you a more realistic idea of what your blood pressure is likely to run, okay? Things to remember with blood pressure. So patients um, sometimes will develop white coat syndrome where their blood pressure will elevate. That can be um, 30 mmHg above what you would typically expect. Um, and that can happen. So if you are, if you don't think that the person is technically um, hypertensive, but you get a higher reading, retake their blood pressure maybe um, after the session or again on another session um, to see whether or not or get them to, to check it at home. Um, other things you need to make sure that they've been quiet. They haven't recently ingested caffeine. That they're calm. You want the heart the arm to be roughly at heart level, so you could even put him up onto a pillow. Mine are packed away at the moment, but you could even put it up on a pillow. You wouldn't want his arm um, way down. And again, like I said, try and be consistent on, um, the, on the arm that you're using. So I would always do the right uh, side myself first, unless I had a reason to check the left, okay? All right.